Hi, 20-1 students. So today we're looking at the lesson 4.2, which is looking at factoring quadratic equations. Now I've divided this lesson into two parts because what I wanted to do in the first part is to do some review from what you would have been doing in Math 10C. So just remembering some of the different methods you looked at um, of how to factor different polynomials. So let's just jump right into it. The first one we're looking at is factoring by grouping. And a lot of times this is going to be really convenient for um, polynomials that have like more terms than the standard kind of, you might recognize this term like x squared plus bx plus c or ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So traditionally we kind of stick with about three different um, terms in a polynomial. So when you have more than that, a lot of times grouping can help you out with that. And so basically what we're doing with grouping is we're taking the first two sets of terms and grouping them together, and then we're taking the second two sets of terms and grouping them together. Um, on the filled in notes that you find on the website, there are kind of like step-by-step -step written out notes, but I'm not going to be writing out like the actual written instructions for what to do because you can use those filled in notes as a reference for that. So essentially what we have now is x squared plus 4x and plus in another bracket xy plus 4y. So what we want to do with these groups is we want to take out the common factors. So what is the biggest thing that is common to both terms in your set of brackets? Um, that you can divide away from them. So for example, like in x squared, we just basically have x times x. And in this one, we have four times by x. So the single x is the one that is common to both of these. So we can pull that out, put it in front of the bracket. If we take x squared and divide out x, we're just left with a single x. If we take 4x and divide out the x, we're left with 4. So just remember to keep your um, like addition and subtraction signs the same when you're doing this, unless you're dividing out a negative variable um, or number. Okay, so on this one, we have x times y, and that's being added to 4 times y. So this thing that's the same in both of those is the y, so we can pull that out. And if we divide y away from xy, we're left with x, and if we divide y away from plus 4, we're left with plus 4. Um, so now what you can see is that we have two sets of brackets that have the same sets of terms, right? It's They're both x plus 4. So essentially now what we can do is we can simplify so, because we're going to have x plus y is on the outside so we can make that into its own bracket and then we're going to multiply that by x plus 4. Okay. Now what you can always do if you're not sure if you factored this properly and I would really recommend this as we move forward for pretty much you know, like most of the things that you'll be doing, maybe not always like if you're doing it at home or whatever, because that can end up being time consuming. But on a test, I'd always recommend checking your work by remultiplying it out to see if it expands to be what you would expect it to be. So if we remultiply this out, remember you're using FOIL. So just to ensure that you're multiplying both terms in both brackets by each other at least once. So FOIL stands for first, so first you multiply the first two terms, so that's going to be x squared. And then O stands for outside, so you take this one's on the outside and this one's on the outside. 4 times x is plus 4x. And then I in FOIL is for inside, so the two terms that are on the inside of the brackets. So that's y times x, so that's going to be, and they're both positive, so it's going to be plus xy. And then L in FOIL stands for last, so the last two terms. So positive 4 times by positive y gives us positive 4y. So if you look at what we have here, it matches up perfectly with what we had up here. So we know that this factoring is correct, x plus y times by x plus 4. Okay, uh, you probably won't be using that very much in 20-1, but it's good to kind of remember that that is a possibility. The next one is factoring <clears throat> trinomials. So we're looking at x squared plus bx plus c in this case. So this is ones where technically you do still have an a value, but remember that if you don't see a number out front, that invisible a value is just one. And so what we do in a situation like this is we want to find two numbers that multiply to make this value. And remember to keep 
like the negative together with that. So usually what I like to do is draw a little table. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to equal negative 24. And those same two numbers that you multiply need to add to make the middle number. So basically they need to add to equal. And again, keep the um, positive or negative before the term together with it. So they need to add to make positive 10. Okay. So depending on how comfortable you are with your multiplication tables, you might be able to start out like guess pretty quickly what it would be. Um, some students prefer to just start with like 1 times 24. Well, like for me personally, I would skip over that because I know 1 and 24, there's no chance of them adding to 10. Same thing, let's see, what if the next number up would be 2? So if we do 2 times by 12, now remember one of these terms is going to have to be negative in order to give us multiply to a negative value. And what we're looking for is positive 10. So if I had positive 12 and I multiplied it by negative 2, well then if I had positive 12 plus negative 2, then I would end up with positive 10, right? Because basically it's 12 minus 2. And so this is the set of numbers that I want, positive 12 and negative 2. Okay, so once I have figured that out, then I can basically take those two numbers and what you want to do is just set up two sets of brackets, right? Because we're always, when we're factoring, we're mostly trying to form like two sets of brackets that are of the form like x plus something or x minus something. So now that I have this, I know that my one number is positive 12, so it's going to be x plus 12 in one bracket. And then my other number is minus 2, so it's going to be x minus 2 in the other bracket. Okay, again, I recommend checking it out really quickly. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is minus 2x. x times positive 12 is plus 12x. And plus 12 times by negative 2 is negative 24. So it's not going to match up yet because remember, you always have to simplify the middle two terms. So we're going to have x squared negative 2 plus 12 gives me plus 10x and then minus 24. And so I see that I end up with the correct thing. So actually, I probably shouldn't have boxed that in because usually I use the box to show you my answer, which is this one. But this is my box for checking off that I did it correctly. Okay. All right. So now we're going to move into one that's a little more complex. Um, so this is the one where you actually have a value in front of the A. Now, what we can use for this one is something called the swing method, which is a little bit... Um, kind of complicated, I guess, but once you get this, the swing of it, I shouldn't say that, but uh, once you get the hang of it, um, yeah, you'll, you should be able to use it pretty easily. So basically what we're doing in the swing method, it's called the swing method because you're kind of like swinging numbers back and forth to multiply and then reverse that multiplication. Because remember, whenever we do something to numbers in an equation, we always have to balance it out. Okay, so what we do initially with this to make it easier to factor is we swing this 6 over to the 12, which basically means we take the 6 and we multiply it by the 12. And so what we end up with is the x squared is now just x squared. 17x, the middle term never changes from this, but I'm doing 6 times by my last term. So if this is a this is B and this is C. Basically, I'm multiplying A by C. Okay, so um, x squared plus 17x plus 6 times by 12, which is 72. Okay, um, <clears throat> oh shoot, I was wondering why that was different. Uh, sorry guys, I forgot that I ch had changed this one up and now I don't know where I put my because this one was actually kind of really terrible to do use for the swing method. So the one that I actually used here was, and this is what you guys would have seen on your sheet was, uh, sorry, it was uh, 17x minus 3. Okay, so sorry, so then we're actually doing 6 times by negative 3. So instead of positive 72, you're probably wondering where I was getting those numbers from. So instead of doing that, I'm doing 6 times negative 3, which is negative 18. There we go. 
Okay, so now we have this, and now that we have this simplified kind of version, what we want to do is the same steps that we did up here. So that's kind of what makes this easy, is that aside from moving these things around, you don't really have to memorize a lot of new steps. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 18, and they need to add to make positive 17. Okay, so again, you can kind of start out if you want, like um, you could always do like 9 times by 2 will give you 18. Um, 9 plus 2 or 9 minus 2, we know that they're not going to come anywhere close to 17, so we can forget about that one. Um, let's see. Oh, actually, if we're multiplying to 18 and we want 17, what about 1 times by 18? So if we had 18 times by negative 1, we would get negative 18. And 18 minus 1 would give us, um, which is plus negative 1, right? Gives us 17, which is what we're looking for. So now we have our numbers. It's positive 18 and negative 1. So we want to do the same thing we did before and put them into brackets. x minus 1, x plus 18. Um, okay, now what I was talking about before is uh, using the swing method, we're swinging kind of back and forth because we want to adapt for the multiplication we did, right? Because we can't just take this number and magically move it over here without any consequences. So what we actually need to do now that we've solved for these um, brackets is we need to divide that 6 out of the number terms that we created through that multiplication. So we're basically undoing the multiplication that we did so that we're not changing our number values. So that means we need to do divide by 6, divide by 6. So you're only doing this by the number values for now. If you end up with a fraction like this, then basically what you're doing is, so 1 6 isn't going to reduce to a whole number. So what you then do is take this 6 and multiply it out front of the x. So you're going to modify your bracket. So the 6 swings up here, 6x minus 1. Okay. Um, in my filled in notes, I kind of explained how you're like eliminating the fraction essentially by multiplying the whole bracket by 6, right? So that's another way to think of it. And then for this one, 18 divided by 6 does give us a whole number, right? 18 divided by 6 is 3. So if you get a whole number through this division, you don't need to move anything up over here by the x. So it's just going to be x plus 3. And that should be our final answer. Okay, now again, I'm not going to um, maybe go through the whole check every time, but you can check even just by scanning 6x squared is right there, so we can see that that's pretty good. Negative 1 times positive 3 is negative 3, right? So it seems pretty good. <laughs> if you want to do a quick check, like when you're doing homework, you could always use that method. But for tests, I would recommend like fully multiplying it out. Okay, the other thing is difference of squares. Now this is... Um, I kind of hate to, you know, like have to memorize a whole bunch of different things, but it is really a lot easier with difference of squares if you're aware of it. So usually with difference of squares, we're going to see um, only two terms in our polynomial. And so that makes it really easy to recognize and then to know what to do because with difference of squares, it's actually really easy. All you need to do to solve for what the brackets are going to be is if you recognize that each term is a perfect square, you just square root them. So like 9, we know square roots perfectly to 3. x squared square roots perfectly to x. And 16 square roots perfectly to 4. So basically, if we do square root of 9x squared, we end up with 3x, right? And if we do the square root of 16, now I know it's negative 16, um, but don't worry too much about that because we'll add that in afterwards. So square root of 16 is 4, right? And so basically now we have our two terms that are going to fill in the brackets. Okay, so it's going to be 3x. Now the big thing here is this is where the negative comes in. If you want to take two values of 4 and they need to multiply to make negative 16, they can't both be positive, right, because two positives multiply to make a positive, and they can't both be negative because um, two negatives multiply to make a positive as well. So what you need to make sure you're doing here is when this sign in between these two values is negative, 
that's the t sign that you're going to have to have two sets of brackets because one is going to have to be plus your second term that you calculated for and the other one is going to have to be minus the second term. Okay, so you'll see how that works out if you do your check because 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times negative 4 is uh, minus 12x. 4x times 3 is positive 12x. And then positive 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And so this is the reason why we only have two terms is because we have 9x squared minus 12 plus 12 adds up to 0 and then minus 16. So that's why when you have those perfect squares, um, they'll always only have two terms. Okay. Now if it's plus 16, then all you would do for this is you would have 3x plus 4 and you just square it. Okay, so basically all we're saying is instead of 3x plus 4 times by 3x minus 4, it's 3x plus 4 times by 3x plus 4. Okay, so if it would have been plus, just make sure you know that you only need to do the one bracket and then just write the squared sign outside of it. Okay, let's look at perfect square trinomials. So this is pretty similar to the one we just did um, in the sense that you're looking at the terms. So before you decide to do any kind of a method for these, it's always helpful to check and see if the values that you have, the number values, are perfect squares. So four square roots to two, um, Sorry, not all of the values. You don't need to look at the middle value. So 4 square roots to 2 and 25 square roots to 5. So you're just looking at the first and last terms. And so because those are perfect squares, we want to do the same thing we did with the difference of squares and square root them. So square root of 4 is 2. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 25 is 5. Okay, and so basically once we have those, what we would want to do is check and see if these two multiply together. So 2 times 5, if we, or sorry, 2x times 5, if we multiply those two together, 2x times by 5, we get 10x. Okay. If this term that you get by multiplying these two values is half of this, which it is, right? So if we multiply 10x times by 2, we get 20x then we know that this is a perfect square trinomial. And so basically now that we have these values, we know that, first of all, they're all pluses, so I don't have to worry about any um, mixing up of like positives and negatives. So essentially my answer is going to be, you take your two terms that you solved for here, 2x plus 5 and 2x plus 5. Okay, this one's really easy because it's um, all positive. So Really, you could just write it as 2x plus 5 squared would be your final answer. Okay, and if you multiply this out, you'll see that it's going to be 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Um, 2 times plus 5 is 10x. 2 times 5 is 10x. So that's why we have to double this number that we came up with here. And then 5 times 5 is 25. So we can see that this does end up being proper. If it's... Um, negatives, you can still use the same thing. You'll just have to figure out because essentially if you had a negative here, what that generally means is that you're going to have to have um, like it be negative 5 times negative 5 because the, the square always has to be positive. But if this number here is negative, just be aware that you would have to have minuses in there. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I gave you some um, quadratic expressions to try and factor on your own. Um, so maybe pause the video, go through and try and do these on your own, and then I'll go through the solutions. I gave you the answer on the filled in notes, but it might be a good idea for you to be able to, um, to see how they were done because they are a little bit different and maybe even a little more challenging than the ones that I gave you, uh, just now as examples. So pause the video, see if you can do these on your own, and then come back and check for the answers. Okay, so really quickly, one thing that we haven't looked at very much through here is if you um, if you wanted to be able to pull out the same number. So with this value here, you could do the, like you could say, okay, this is ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So then which method would you use? 
well, so far when we looked at it, we used this swing method, right? So let's have a look and see what happens when you use this swing method here. So essentially what we're doing is we're just taking the first value and multiplying it by the last. So we end up with x squared plus 3x, and then 3 times by negative 6 gives us minus 18. Okay. So then what you're looking for is two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to 3. So multiply to negative 18 and add to positive 3. So what would be, let's see, we have 9 times 2. No way that we add 9 and 2, So because one of them is going to have to be negative. So if we did negative 9 plus 2, it would be negative 7. If we do positive 9 minus 2, it's going to be 7. Um, so those ones don't work. What about um, 6 times 3? Well, we have, let's see, uh, let's see, we want positive 3. So if we make this one positive 6 and we multiply it by negative 3, then over here it'd be 6 plus negative 3, and that would give us 3. So that one does work, okay? So for the swing method, we would now say, we can break down our two brackets, x um, plus 6 and x minus 3. Okay, now we just need to go back. So remember, we multiplied out this 3, so we need to account for that in our math by dividing it out of the two numbers we got from that multiplication. So 6 divided by 3 gives us 2, x plus 2. And uh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so x minus 1 would be our answer for this one. Okay, and you can always... Oh, wait a minute, how does that work? 6 divided by 3, 3 divided by 3, because it's minus negative 3 divided by negative 3. Oh, and that would be the other thing. This was supposed to be, oh no, that's positive 3. Negative 3 divided by positive 3 is going to be negative 1. Um, oh, and so then that's the other component here is if you end up like we can see basically that this one is not going to end up giving us 3x squared, right? So what happens if you have full numbers and they don't, neither one of them divides out to give you a number in front of the x? In that case, you need to extend out by adding the 3 out front. So 3x plus 2x minus 1. There we go. Now, for some of you guys, you might remember that there's an alternative to this because <laughs> honestly, for me, this like seems like a lot of work. If the alternative option is that initially I would have seen three is a factor for all of these different terms, so I could have divided it out to start with. So I'll maybe just show you guys on a quick piece of blank paper here. So basically, the other option I could have done here is said, okay, because 3 is in all of those, I'm just going to divide it out to begin with. So 3x squared divided by 3 leaves me with x squared. 3x divided by 3 leaves me with x. And negative 6 divided by 3 leaves me with negative 2, right? And now I could just factor this. Two numbers that multiply to make negative 2 and add to make 1, well... I feel like that's pretty obvious right away because the only numbers that multiply to make 2 are 2 times by 1. If I want to have positive 1, that means my 2 would have needed to be positive and my 1 would have needed to be negative. Sorry guys, I'm not spacing these out very well. It's 2 times by negative 1, right? So that's going to give me negative 2 when I multiply. And for positive 1, 2 plus negative 1 is going to give me positive 1. So now I know my numbers are 2 and negative 1. So now I could just go 3x plus 2x minus 1. So you can see how that's a lot simpler than going through all of these steps for the swing method, right? So if you are quite comfortable with factoring, it's it's nice because then you can see shortcuts like that, um, especially in like a test situation, for example. Okay, so for this next one, we have something kind of similar. And again, this is a situation that we didn't look at in the example, so it's good to go over. With this one, 
Of course, there's always like multiple methods that you can use to get the answer. So there's not one right way. So if you got the right answer the way that you did it and it's different from what I'm about to show you, then that's totally fine as long as you're consistently getting the right answer using the method that you're doing. Um, what I like to do a lot of the times is when I have a fraction out front here of my x squared term, I want to get rid of it. And so if I want to get rid of it, I basically, especially if it's like a 1 over 2, it's really easy because basically I just multiply it by the denominator, right? So a half times by 2 gives me 1. So I'm going to take the whole thing, half x squared minus x minus 4, and I'm going to multiply it by 2 to get rid of that fraction. So when I multiply by 2, 2 times by a half is 1, so I'm left with x squared. 2 times by negative x gives me negative 2x, and 2 times by negative 4 gives me negative 8. Okay, so now I have a really simple um, polynomial to solve for. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to make negative 8 and add to make negative 2. And so, of course, that's going to be pretty easy, right? So 4 times by 2, if they, one of them has to be a negative and I want my answer to add up to negative 2, if I start out with negative 4 and I add 2, I'm going to end up with negative 2. So negative 4 plus 2 equals negative 2. So these are my numbers, negative 4 and positive 2. So now I can set up my brackets, x plus 2, <laughs> sorry I'm doing this backwards, x minus 4. Okay. Um, now at the end of this, because I did get rid of that um, half by, div by multiplying it out by 2, so now that I have these numbers, I have to, um, if I wanted to multiply back out to make this exact expression, I would need to put that half out here. Okay, so if you multiply something out to kind of like make it easier to work with, remember that you always have to account for that in your final answer because when I look back, if I were to multiply this out, I would not get this um, set of terms, right? So now if I were to do this, uh, I should get that set of terms. Okay, so if I were to multiply these out, x times x gives me x squared, x times by negative 4 is minus 4x, x times by positive 2 is plus 2x, and plus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So simplify that. x squared minus 4 plus 2 gives me minus 2x um, minus 8. Right? It's not the same as what I have up here. However, if I have the half like I saw up here, so if I were to keep that in all the way through, half times by x squared gives me 1 half x squared, half times by negative 2 gives me negative 1 x squared, or sorry, x, and half times by negative 8 gives me negative 4. So then I can see that now my answer is correct. So always good to check your answers there at the end. Okay, last one here really quickly. This one, if you look right away, you can see there's two terms. So that should be a hint to you that you're looking at a difference of squares. Okay, so if we look at that, 36 is very obviously a perfect square because it's square roots to 6. 0.49, sometimes students struggle with the decimal, but if you have a decimal that if you were to get rid of the decimal and it still just looks like... Um, and think of this as a whole number, would 49 be a perfect square? Well, yeah, because 7 times 7 gives you 49. And so as a decimal, it will be as well. Um, so it's fine if you need to do your calculator for that. But basically what you're going to have is the square root of 0 0.49 is going to be 0 0.7. And the square root of 36 is going to be 6. So now when we're making our... Um, Oh, shoot, and this one was j squared, so we have to square root that as well, which is just going to be j, and 36 was k squared, which we square root as well, so it's going to be 6k. So now we have our terms for our brackets. Again, remember, because you have a negative sign here, you're going to have to have 0.7j uh, plus 6k. So you're going to have to have one bracket where you add the two terms and multiply by another bracket where you subtract the two terms. So minus 6k. Okay, so that should be your final answer for that one. And if you want, you can multiply it all out and double check, but that should give you the correct answer. Okay, um, let me just see here. Where are we at? Difference of squares, we did that. Okay. 
So the next thing we're going to look at is factoring polynomials that have a quadratic pattern. And all that means is that we have a term that is squared, and then that same term is being multiplied by another value in the second component here. And then we have just um, a numerical value at the end. Okay. So essentially what we're doing here is even though you have this bracket that's x plus 2 squared plus 7 x plus 2 plus 12, the, f the format is the same as doing x squared plus 7x plus 12, okay? So what you can do is you can basically substitute in a value. Um, some students find it confusing if you still keep it as x because you're changing that. So if you want, like in the written notes, I put in p squared and 7p, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, you're just saying this whole thing, just to make things easy so we don't have a lot of values to look at, we can just count it as one thing for now because nothing in these brackets should be being changed as we go through our factoring process. So basically what I would look for now is the exact same thing as we've been looking for. I need two numbers that multiply to make positive 12, and they need to add to make positive 7. So what do we have for 12? We have 12 times 1, which is going to be 13, so that doesn't work. Uh, 6 times 2, which is going to give us 8, so that doesn't work. Um, 4 times 3, which is 4 plus 3 is 7. So that one works for us. So now we have our two terms. Everything in here is positive. So it's basically going to be um, x plus 4 and x plus 3 are our two brackets. Now the thing here is, of course, if we multiply this out, we're not going to get this. So what we need to do is we've taken this term and substituted it for the x plus 2 just to make things simple. Now we need to substitute it back in and then simplify it. So essentially what we're going to say is, okay, if we had x plus 4, now it's x plus 2, which was inside the brackets, plus 4. And then over here, x plus 2 plus 3. Okay. Um, yeah, and now you can just combine like terms. So 2 and 4 are both just number values. So x plus 6 is what we have in the first bracket. And 2 plus 3 is 5, which we're going to have in the second bracket. So x plus 5. Um, and so that's our final component here. Now you can get super fancy and do a check on this one. And it should end up giving you um, this as well. So basically what you would want to do to check here is you would um, expand this out and then simplify it and see if you come up with the same thing if you were to multiply these out. So this is a very long check, but I can walk you through it really quickly. So basically what you would do, we have x plus 2 squared. So x plus 2 times by x plus 2 plus, I'm going to expand this right away, 7 times by x is 7x. 7 times by 2 is 14, and then we just have plus 12, okay? So now if we want to multiply this out, x times x is x squared, x times 2 is plus 2x, plus 2x, 2 times 2 is 4, plus, and now we can just add on these end terms, 7x plus 14 plus 12. x squared is the only term like that, so we'll keep it the same. 2x plus 2x is 4x plus 7x is 11x. Um, let's see, x squared 2x, 2x, 7x. Sometimes I like to cross it off just to keep track. 14 plus 2 is 16 plus 4 is plus 20. And so that's what I would have here. So what I want to check and see is if I multiply these out, will it add up to the same value? Oh, I feel like maybe something's not going to work there because I have 6 times 5, which is 30, not 20. So I'm wondering if I messed up somewhere. x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus 7x plus 14 plus 12. Oh, that would be it because this was 12, not uh, 2. So that would give us 30. Okay, <laughs> that makes more sense. So now if I if I were to multiply out these brackets, do I get the same value? So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. x times 6 is 6x. And 6 times 5 is 30. 
So if I were to combine these, x squared plus 11x plus 30, God, I'm really being bad at <laughs> leaving out my values. So yes, these are the same. So now I know for sure that I factored this um, quadratic pattern polynomial correctly. Okay, so a really complicated check. Hopefully you won't have to spend your time doing that during a test. Um, so I gave you this one to factor as well. Uh, let's see, 12x squared. I'm not going to go over that one because that one is basically the exact same set of steps as here. So you shouldn't have any difficulty with it. Um, so the last thing we'll look at in this lesson before you guys can move on to your assignment will be solving quadratic equations um, by factoring. So if you remember in the first lesson we were talking about how do we solve um, quadratic functions, which is the term that we use when we're talking about um, quadratic equations basically in graph form. So with this one we want to think about how do we solve the quadratic equations, which is finding, remember, the roots or the zeros. So basically, we're looking for the x-intercepts. Um, and so basically, in order to do that with an equation, when we can't just graph it out, is we want to use factoring like we've just looked at. So if we look at this one here, you're going to use the same um, set of steps that we just did, but we're just going to expand on it a little bit because I'm going to explain to you about the roots. So if we want to factor this term, we have a polynomial that's of the form x squared plus bx plus c. No value up front, so we don't need to do the swing method. So we can go right into what are two numbers that multiply to make positive 25 and add to make negative 10. <clears throat> well, seems pretty obvious, right? So two numbers that multiply to make 25 are 5 times 5. Um, 25 times 1 doesn't seem like it would come close to that. So 5 times 5 gives us 25. Now if we want them to add to negative 10 and multiply to positive 25, it needs to be negative 5 plus negative 5, right? And that's going to give us negative 10. And negative 5 times negative 5 gives us positive 25. So basically what we have is, if we put it in brackets, x minus 5, x minus 5, or x minus 5 squared. You could put it like that. And so now how do we interpret this as roots? Well, basically the roots are, so you'll remember this from the last chapter, that when we have x um, plus or minus something uh, from graphing things in the, and now I'm forgetting, was it the standard form or the vertex, vertex form? So remember that it's the, the plus and the minus are opposite on the graph. So if we have negative 5 here, what that tells us is that on our graph, our x-intercept is going to be at positive 5. So we would say um, the roots are um, x equals positive 5. Okay, now in this case, we only have one root, right? Because we came up with negative 5 for both of those. You can always go in, especially on a test, like it's always good to use whatever you can to confirm your answer. So if I go in and do x squared um, minus 10x plus 25, and I look at my graph for that. Oh, right, I have my windows still set up from the last lesson, which are a little bit crazy. Um, actually, I'll go to zoom and just do a standard because I think that should work. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. So if you look at that, you can see that it does in fact look like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is exactly where the vertex hits. And so that would be one root at positive 5. So we know that our answer is correct. Okay. So you might ask if we can do that on the calculator, why are we doing it this way? Um, because it's important for you to understand the math behind it. And then also it helps you to get a better understanding of what this actually, what this equation is actually doing, right? And how it relates to graphs. Um, and the other thing is you are required by curriculum to be able to show that you can do it this way, but the graphing calculator is always a nice backup, especially on a test, to, just to confirm your answers and make you feel more secure. Um, so with this one, what do we notice right away? How many terms? There's two terms. So whenever we have two terms, what we always want to think about is, is it a um, 
perfect square. So with that, yes, x squared square roots to x and 16 square roots to 4. So square root of x squared equals x, square root of 16 equals 4. Now we have the negative, so remember what that tells us. It means that we have to have x um, plus 4 and x minus 4 in our brackets because remember it's the plus 4x minus 4x that eliminates that middle term so that we don't have it in there. So what does that tell about us about our roots? Tells us that our roots are positive 4 and negative 4. Okay, uh, let's see. So one more here we can look at using the swing method for this one because we have an a value out here. Now remember when we went through the practice ones earlier, um, I talked about dividing out the term and that can make it easier than just going through the, with the swing method. If you wanna decide whether or not you can do that, remember that the a value has to be able to be divided as an even number out of all the rest of the terms. And because three doesn't divide out of two or eight, we know we're just gonna have to use the swing method, right? You're not just gonna be able to divide this out of the term and then factor. So we'll have to use the swing method. So that means we're gonna swing the three over to the eight. So we're gonna be left with x squared minus two x, and then three times by negative eight gives us negative 24. And then now we can look for factors that multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 2. Okay, so you can think about 12 times by 2. Um, and we know that because we're looking at negative values, we're going to have to uh, assign one negative value to these. So if we're looking at negative 2, we'd have to do negative 12 plus 2 which is going to give us negative 10 so that doesn't work what about um what's a factor of 24 with uh 3 that would be 8 times by negative or sorry negative 8 times by 3 um negative 8 plus 3 is going to give us negative 5 so we're getting closer to 2 but not quite there um what about 4 6 times 4 is 24 negative 6 plus 4 gives us negative 2. So we are there. Usually with the negatives, what I like to do is um, start out like figuring out the first ones if I like which one you would want to apply the negative to. So right away I knew with the first one, because you need to end up with a negative value, the bigger value has to be assigned the negative. So sometimes that can help you so you don't have to go through like each set because what can be time consuming is when some students go negative 12 times by 2 and they try it and then they try 12 times by negative 2 and sometimes you get a really long list that you have to go through so that can be quite time consuming so it's good if you can just like notice what you're adding up to if it's a negative value just be aware that your bigger value is going to have to be negative and then that makes it easier to just make a consistent list um, okay so now we have our numbers negative 6 and positive 4 so x plus uh, 4 and x minus 6. So now, because we swung that 3 over here, we need to divide it out of those numbers that we got from that. So 4 divided by 3 and 6 divided by 3. So this is one of the cases with the swing method where 4 divided by 3 is never going to give you a whole number. So what you do is you swing the 3 up in front of the x. So we're going to end up with 3x plus 4. Okay, and then with this one, 6 divided by 3 does give us a whole number, so we can leave it x minus 2. Okay, and then of course, I would always recommend that you check. So 3x times x gives us 3x squared. Um, 3x times negative 2 gives us negative 6x plus 4x. And then 4 times negative 2 is minus 8. So negative 6 plus 4 is going to give us negative 2, so this checks out. And so then what do we say as roots? The common mistake would be to think that we need to use the 3 for it, but we don't. We still only use these second values, so we would say the roots are um, positive 4 and negative 2. Okay. 
And that's everything for kind of our little refresher on factoring from Math 10. So you guys have an assignment that you can work on to kind of try out some of those methods. And then next time we're going to expand on this lesson. So we're going to carry on with uh, lesson 4.2, but looking at some new methods of factoring quadratic equations. Okay, so I will see you then.